OpenAI closes the largest private financing round in history. However, even more importantly, are they about to become open again? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. A lot of big news out of OpenAI yesterday, all of which we're going to dig into today. The headliner is that they've closed what seems like the biggest private fundraising round in history, raising $40 billion at a valuation of $300 billion, basically doubling their valuation from about six months ago. But still, that is definitely not the story that has everyone talking. OpenAI has committed to releasing their first open weights model since GPT-2. Here's what Sam Altman had to say about this. We're planning to release our first open weight language model since GPT-2. We've been thinking about this for a long time, but other priorities took precedence. Now it feels important to do. Before release, we will evaluate this model according to our preparedness framework, like we would with any other model, and we will do extra work given that we know this model will be modified post-release. We still have some decisions to make, so we're hosting developer events to gather feedback and later play with early prototypes. We're excited to see what developers build and how large companies and governments use it where they prefer to run a model themselves. Now, in terms of what exactly they mean by open weights, the company's head of API, Stephen Heidel, wrote that this meant a model that you can, quote, run on your own hardware. To me, this implies that the company is not just going to release the weights for old deprecated models like GPT-3. Instead, it sounds like either a modified version of 01 or 03, or something that's closer to the state of the art, or more likely an entirely new model that's optimized to run on consumer-grade hardware. Given how much OpenAI has staked their claim on reasoning models, and given how important reasoning is for driving agents and all other manner of advanced tasks like coding, it could also imply that OpenAI is looking to compete on that category of open model as well. Now, obviously, one of the running jokes with OpenAI especially propagated by competitors like Elon Musk, is that the company is far from open. And indeed, it seemed at some point along the way, OpenAI had become concerned from a safety standpoint, or perhaps had evolved their thinking for some other reason, to move away from open models that people could actually build and modify. However, it's clear that there's been an evolution in this more recently. In a Reddit AMA in January, Sam Altman wrote, I personally think we need to figure out a different open source strategy. Not everyone at OpenAI shares this view, and it's also not our current highest priority. We will produce better models going forward, but we will maintain less of a lead than we did in previous years. So for those who have been reading the tea leaves, this doesn't seem completely out of left field. More importantly, there is very clearly a genesis in a motivator for this that comes from outside the company, and that is, of course, DeepSeek. While OpenAI and Altman didn't mention DeepSeek in any of these announcements, Altman did share that change of heart on Reddit a little over a week after the release of DeepSeek R1, just as its viral moment was hitting. Since then, DeepSeek's impact in China has been palpable. We've seen the model integrated into online services from each of that country's four big tech firms, who have also released their own cutting-edge models in just the last few short months. Keep in mind that DeepSeek didn't just open-source their model. They also open-sourced a huge range of training optimizations that allowed them to build it. It is not unreasonable to view what has been happening with DeepSeek in China as nationwide technology transfer, with basically all Chinese firms leveraging each other's breakthroughs to drive AI adoption. Singaporean poker player Wayne Yap posted his impressions on tech in China after a recent visit. Regarding AI adoption, he wrote, DeepSeek is integrated in Baidu Maps. Baidu Maps is the big maps player in China, the equivalent of Google Maps. It was shocking but pleasant to see that when I was searching for food, I could just press Ask DeepSeek and it would recommend me places to go. Again, point being that the interconnection of these services is happening very, very quickly. And also that that's enabled not by an extra active partnerships department on the part of DeepSeek, but simply by virtue of the way their models have been released. Last week, there was a discussion on X about open source AI becoming the official position for the Chinese government. Investor Balaji Srinivasan commented, I agree that it's surprising that the country of the Great Firewall is suddenly the country of open source AI, but it's consistent in a different way, which is that China is focused on doing whatever it takes to win, even to the point of copying partially abandoned Western values like open source, which seemed like the hardest thing to adopt. The broader discussion has, of course, been about China seeming to adopt the strategy of driving down the cost of AI as much as possible and then exporting it to the world to outcompete Western firms. Basically, a new form of AI belt and road. In comments to the Financial Times, Zhang Yongyan of the Chinese University of Hong Kong coined the term open source modernization. He said, Western modernization is very exclusive. The West doesn't help other countries, poor countries, to develop. Chinese modernization, I call it open source modernization. When you get rich, you help other countries to get rich. The point of all of this, and why we're talking about it in the context of an open AI announcement, is that DeepSeek and Chinese AI in general are using open source as a way to push distribution as hard as possible. And it seems fairly clear that they are not just going to be competing for the Chinese market for long. The really interesting question is whether OpenAI is leading into open source to compete on that vector. 
Now, on the one hand, it doesn't seem strictly necessary given their insane growth rate. In fact, also yesterday, Altman tweeted, the ChatGPT launched 26 months ago was one of the craziest viral moments I'd ever seen, and we added 1 million users in five days. We added 1 million users in the last hour. Now, the ongoing giblification of everything is the obvious explanation, but the point remains that OpenAI doesn't appear, at least from the outside, to need to embrace open source to drive adoption. ChatGPT is basically already one of, if not the fastest adoption curve in the history of tech. Then again, if Altman considers OpenAI to be more than just another tech firm, and if the ambition is more than simply making a boatload of money, if this is instead about a global AI competition, one that involves a competition for values, then all of a sudden the open source shift makes a ton of sense. At the moment, OpenAI's models cannot be deployed absolutely everywhere like DeepSeek's can. Beyond just licensing costs, OpenAI is resource constrained. By offloading inference to local deployments using open source, OpenAI could decide to compete to become the de facto AI choice for the US and even the world. Altman even hinted at the idea that he wants this new open source model deployed in as many commercial applications as possible. Writing in a not-so-subtle knock on Meta's licensing model, we will not do anything silly like saying that you can't use our open model if your service has more than 700 million monthly active users. We want everyone to use it. Like I said, that's a knock on Meta, which restricts the largest companies from using Llama models if they reach that size. Overall, what we're seeing here is potentially a very, very big strategic shift for OpenAI with very, very big implications, not just for the AI battle, but for the entire world. And the company is definitely going to be well-resourced as they make that shift. As I mentioned at the top of the show, OpenAI has officially closed their latest funding round, raising $40 billion at a $300 billion valuation. This is the largest private funding round for a tech company in history, beating out the $10 billion raised by Databricks late last year. In a very short blog post, OpenAI framed the round as allowing them to build towards AGI. They wrote that the funding will enable them to push the frontiers of AI research even further, scale our compute infrastructure, and deliver increasingly powerful tools for the 500 million people who use ChatGPT every week. To my knowledge, that 500 million number is the first time that has been shared. So yes, a full half billion people now are using this tool every single week. Still, the fine print of the deal is extremely noteworthy, significantly raising the stakes, among other things, for OpenAI's for-profit conversion. The deal is being led by SoftBank, who are investing $30 billion. The $40 billion overall is split into two halves, with $10 billion to be received up front, and a further $30 billion to arrive by the end of the year. The second payment is partially contingent on OpenAI completing their for-profit conversion this year. If they fail, SoftBank is allowed to cut their contribution by $10 billion. Further VentureBeat reports that $18 billion of the funding is earmarked for Project Stargate, so won't go towards supporting OpenAI's normal operations. These types of deal terms aren't necessarily super foreign for OpenAI. For example, they had already committed to return the $6.6 billion they raised last fall to investors if they didn't complete the for-profit conversion within two years. Altman had already implied that the conversion was existential given their need to fund costly infrastructure and training. And so honestly, what's another $10 billion among friends at risk if that for-profit conversion doesn't go through? One more quick one today, another example of how OpenAI is thinking about potentially expanding its footprint more broadly. The company has announced that their OpenAI Academy is now live. The initiative is a free online resource hub to help, as they put it, support AI literacy and help people from all backgrounds access tools, best practices, and peer insights to use AI more effectively and responsibly. Friend of the show and OpenAI general manager of education, Leah Belsky, wrote, When I first joined OpenAI, I kept circling one question. What's the best way to teach the world how to use AI, at scale, in real time, as the technology keeps evolving? Coming from Coursera, I've seen firsthand how powerful online learning can be. But this moment is different. The tools are more powerful, the pace is faster, and the opportunity is much, much bigger. Do you build a next-gen online course platform? Do you meet learners through the education ecosystem already in motion? Do you turn ChatGPT, the tool itself, into the teacher? Or maybe it's some of all of that. OpenAI Academy is our first step. Bite-sized tutorial from ChatGPT to campus to Sora video creation partner-led in-person workshops, build hours, and global content collabs. Learning communities on the way, built around students, teachers, and small businesses. The goal, make AI literacy accessible, practical, and global. Let the education ignite learners versus running them through long courses in phase one. This is just the beginning. This week, we have another announcement coming, which takes a very different type of crack at driving AI literacy. Now, although Superintelligent has evolved, now focused on helping companies audit their agent opportunities and then finding the right partners through a marketplace to actually deliver on those agent opportunities, a lot of the themes that Leah and OpenAI are exploring are exactly where we started. You can go and check it out now at academy.openai.com, and I'm excited to hear what you think. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always, and until next time, peace.